Hey everybody, Matt Johnson here from Primary Vision Network. Um, I'm actually jumping in for Mark Rosano, who's out this week. This is going to be a shortened show as we want to get everybody into their independence holiday plans. Uh, you know, with having an extended couple days here and how the fourth falling on a Tuesday is really going to enable a lot of people to get out there and enjoy their holiday, enjoy an extended holiday. I know from just seeing some of our marketing this week that uh, it seems people tried to escape and get an extra couple days and by leaving on Wednesday night or Thursday. So, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, good for people to get away from their screens, us included. Uh, we will be closed on Monday and Tuesday. So let's get ourselves to the frack spread count, and then we're going to talk about a few other things in demand and talk to you about the frack job count, which is coming out later this fall. So here we are. Let's look at the number for the week ending Friday, June 30th. Frack spread count 272. This is going to be minus 5. We've only seen a couple changes here on the Haynesville and DJ Basin. Uh, nothing too much to be concerned about. What we're really is going to be interesting here is we had a discussion today about where is the frack spread count headed after a really tough week for the airline industry as well as um, other methods of transportation. And then, of course, uh, you know, all these bottlenecks happen. It's not just airlines. It trickles itself down to automobiles and, you know, train traffic um, as demand will start to swell to some of these other parts of uh, transportation. And then, you know, looking into Denver, they had massive weather delays. There's weather delays along the southeast. It's a, We're in a heat wave in Texas. So a few things to watch out for for next week that we'll definitely cover on our show next week. The number is 272 for the week ending Friday, June 30th. Let's move ahead. So I just have a few slides I want to go over today. We're going to keep this nice and short. Uh, you know, talking about the frack spread count demand, I think it's important to kind of understand how things have changed uh, over the year. You know, as we refresh CapEx in Q1, uh, we definitely saw an increase getting us into March 290. We had good stable gas prices, a nice strong oil price deck, and then Kind of the floor fell out on the gas prices, and that's where we saw some rotation from operators as they wanted to get out of some of their contracts, particularly in the gassy basins like the Haynesville and the uh, Northeast and Appalachia, being up on the Marcellus and Utica. So we saw a handful of spreads, probably about 5-8%, somewhere in that neighborhood, come offline. And they're finding new homes now, particularly in South Texas and you know areas that get a little bit warmer, uh, particularly up north in the DJ and the Williston. So we saw that kind of come back here over the last handful of weeks, even with the rig count continuing to, uh, you know, go decline uh, as it has this week. I believe it was down minus eight. So, you know, we're, we're watching that story. Obviously, without rigs, we don't have ducks. Without ducks, we don't have spreads. And, you know, again, ducks represent the drilled yet uncompleted wells. And depending on where you get your statistics from, uh, we like uh, Stephen's interpretation of it over at Princeton Energy Services. Last I saw, he was about eight weeks. You know, that's if we don't really then drill another well. But, you know, looking into it, obviously we've kind of had a little bit of volatility. Going forward, this interesting point to take away for this week is we're probably going to see more spreads come offline this week, which will represent uh, the number for next week. And that's really, you know, tied to those transportation and weather issues that I mentioned earlier. So something to watch out for the frack spread count demand. Probably, you know, not a substantial move, but another one to be concerned with is we kind of stay in this confidence range of 250 to 275 as we enter the late summer and get back to our seasonal bump. Moving ahead, we just wanted to kind of highlight a new product we did this week on our Bloomberg Intelligence webinar call. You can see that in the lower right. We had a really nice uh, webinar on Wednesday. It was free. Keep your eye out for those types of opportunities from Primary Vision Network. Uh, you can go on to primaryvision.co, go to our webinars tab, and you can see all the webinars we have in the future. I have a great one coming up from Bob Barbe on Refrax in July. It's definitely a paid one, but one that you want to check out too if you're looking out to understanding more information about Refrax. And Bob does a great job of it. So, you know, talking about um, on the Bloomberg webinar, we talked about the Frack Job Count. And this is a new product for us, and this is going to be released in the fall. It's been something that we've used as a bellwether indicator slash. Um, support for the frack spread count going back to 2016. And it's really just been an internal number for us to understand the total number of wells and then forecast out those wells, which sits alongside the frack spread count. And I've got a couple notes on it on the next page, but let's just focus on what the frack job count is for now. It's a, it's a number of the completions a pressure pumper does to a specific well. And the goal of the frack job count is for companies that look closer at completions. You know, again, your nomenclature might be different, stimulations, 
jobs. We're going to call them frack jobs that are tied to a specific well to better understand correlations to activity um, by operators and pumpers and locations. And then, of course, the, all the intelligence that surrounds that and all the use of consumables and all the publicly traded companies that are tied to those jobs. And then, of course, this will help better understand the correlations to production. Moving ahead, let's learn more about the frack job count. And really what I just want to kind of explain the differences that are going to happen between the frack job count, which utilizes total and the frack job spread count, which uses max. So, you know, if the frack spread count has 280 active spreads on Monday and every day it goes down five until we get down to, you know, 250 on Sunday, um, the frack spread count for that week is going to be 280. The reason is we track true demand here. We want to understand how much equipment is out there and being utilized on a weekly basis because we also track supply. When talking about the frack job count, we're going to look at totals and we're going to break this down into a weekly number. At one point in time, we had considered releasing the commercial product to be uh, a focus on monthly uh, number of completions, but we were able to go back eight years and, and look deep into this data in the last six months to understand that weekly makes more sense. It makes more sense to complement the frack spread count. It makes more sense to break down the uh, frack job count. Um, and ultimately, this is going to be a great supportive product, a complementary product. In fact, it might even be more popular than the frack spread count, which is really just kind of the bellwether of tracking completions and active pressure pumpers in the market, right? So the frack job count for us will will utilize leveraging submitted documentation by these operators and pumpers, you know, call them completion filings, stimulation filings, uh, regulatory filings. Uh, and that will be something that we will forecast out uh, many months. Uh, we'll also delineate it down to each individual basin. Uh, lots to consider for the frack job count. And one little piece of information is we did omit some of the smaller basins. As you might be aware, the frack spread count is actually provides forecasts for 17 different basins. The frack job count will not be for all of the basins, particularly when you get down to basins that have one or two. Um, this really tends to mess with algorithms and forecasts. So we're going to look at, you know, the majority of the market, probably about 95%, with that additional 5% being something that will be kind of a rounding issue at that point. So something to consider as we move forward. We'll have more documentation on this as we release it after the summer, but we're really excited about the frack job count. That's going to be it for this week. Thank you for coming on and watching the frack spread count. If you like what you heard, please share. Uh, you know, we'd also appreciate you to subscribe to the channel if you got this. This was a free show for everyone this week. We're really excited to announce that in July, we'll be bringing out back John and Greg to do the dip show, which looks at equities, shale, OPEC, all the interesting things that people talk about in oil and gas each week so they can share their opinions and views. And then we'll continue to have our weekly schedule of Monday Macro View, Mark on Wednesdays with the EIA update and Thursdays on the economy. And of course, on the frack spread count on Friday. And if, if uh, you know, Mark's away, I can hopefully jump in there and do the frack spread count here and there like I have been. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the show and share it and subscribe and, and all those good things. But have a great, happy 4th, July 4th, Independence Day with your family and friends. Be safe out there around all those fireworks. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend.